we have two sources now confirming that Nordin Top, one of Jamaat Islamiyah's most wanted men, probably the most wanted man uh, in Jamaat Islamiyah, uh, an Islamist terrorist group uh, in this region, is dead. Uh, if this is uh, true, it is a huge, significant step forward in the battle against Islamist uh, violence here. His death came after an 18-hour long gun battle in central Java at a hideout uh, that the uh, men, uh, Nordin Top plus three or four other men, uh, were hiding out in. Uh, we've got some very dramatic picture of that raid. Uh, and let me just pause for a second while you can hear the volley of gunfire uh, that was uh, sent into that house. Yang anda saksikan ini adalah detik-detik akhir ketika tim Densus 88 menyerang. So you can see uh, what a ferocious firefight uh, went on there for a, a long, long time since Friday uh, afternoon all the way through uh, overnight. Uh, finally, now we have confirmation from two different sources that Nordin Top uh, is dead. It must be stressed that getting reliable information uh, in uh, Indonesia can sometimes be tricky, so we, we have to be a little bit cautious. But we have two different sources now telling us that Nordin Top was in that building. He was shot dead. Let me give you some background uh, on Nordin Top. He uh, has been the most wanted man pretty much in Indonesia uh, for almost seven years since the 2002 Bali bombing, uh, which left 202 people dead, many of them Australian holiday makers and since then Australia has been very active in trying to track him down but he has been incredibly elusive to pin down. Uh, they think he was involved in a string of bombings across Indonesia uh, in 2003 on the Marriott Hotel in Jakarta. A year later his men attacked uh, the Australian embassy. Uh, the year after that in 2005 they hit Bali again leaving 20 people dead uh, and then of course just last month they hit again the Marriott Hotel and the Ritz-Carlton. So uh, he has been involved with a string of devastating uh, attacks uh, in Indonesia and this will be seen as a major victory in the battle against terrorism in Indonesia. Natalie? Right, and Dan, you, as you say, he, has, uh, he had succeeded for many years in uh, eluding police. What more do we know about him and how he rose to such prominence, prominence in the ranks of that uh, um, a terrorist world that he existed in. I, I'm, a, I'm sorry, I, I missed a little bit of your question there, Natalie, but in terms of what else we know of what is going on right now, well, we know that the police have also raided a house on the edge of uh, Jakarta where they found two car bombs, one that was completely ready uh, to be detonated, another that was in the process of being uh, built. Uh, the police say they found uh, about 100 kilograms uh, of explosives together with other material including radios and uh, basically bolts and pieces of metal that they think could have been used uh, for shrapnel uh, in these uh, bombs. Uh, we're told that two uh, people uh, were killed at that address uh, and uh, this follows the arrest uh, of two men uh, in central Java that, that led to this whole string uh, of arrests. The, the, the unit that was involved was Detachment 88 which is uh, Indonesia's uh, anti-terrorist unit which has been on the trail of Nordin as I say really since uh, the Bali bombs uh, and have had a number of close calls trying to track him down most notably in 2006 in uh, April in central Java again where they came very close they think to catching him but somehow uh, he slipped uh, through the net. Nordin himself is actually Malaysian uh, and he came to Indonesia after 9-11 when the Malaysians started cracking down on extremists. He came to Indonesia, fell in with uh, Jamaat Islamiyah and then fell out with them basically and formed some sort of splinter cell uh, on his own after the main body of J.I. had decided to turn its back on violence. He continued on this violent road uh, with devastating effects, always targeting Western targets, uh, hotels, embassies, uh, tourist destinations and so on. Uh, and now I think this will give many people uh, the chance to pause and, and have a bit of a sigh of relief. But experts are saying what we don't know is how far his network spreads. He may be dead, but as we've seen so many times in other places, in Iraq and in Afghanistan, uh, killing the leader of a terrorist group doesn't necessarily mean that the terrorism stops.